Hello, my name is Stephen Daniel with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering team. This video is about how you can configure your Secure Access Link Gateway to go online and register with Avaya. Before we begin, let's cover a few key points. Prior to beginning this process, you will need to satisfy the following. You will need to submit the SAL Universal Install Form to obtain a unique Solution Element Identifier and Product ID for your SAL Gateway. You will need to ensure that your cell gateway has been connected to your network and is able to resolve fully qualified domain names. Also, keep in mind that this procedure only applies to getting your cell gateway online with Avaya. And finally, this procedure applies to both the standalone cell gateway and system platform cell gateway 1.8 or greater. Let's begin by logging into our cell gateway with a user that has security administrator level permissions or higher. I'll go ahead and do that now, then press log on. Once authenticated, I'm going to want to expand the administration menu. Now from the list of submenu items here, there are three mandatory parameters that we must configure and one optional parameter. The three configuration parameters that must be filled out are gateway configuration, core server, and remote server, with the one optional parameter being proxy server. Let's begin by first giving our gateway an identity. We'll do that by clicking on the gateway configuration link above. Now here we're going to want to provide the IP address of the gateway, the solution element ID, as well as the alarm ID. Now in order to do that we'll want to click on the edit button and fill out these parameters. Now as you can see here, I've went ahead and pre-populated mine. Go ahead and enter your details and once having done so, go ahead and press apply. As you can see here, we're now being asked to click on the link above to restart our gateway services. Now because we have a couple of other parameters that we'd like to configure, We'll go ahead and hold off on doing this until the end. The next parameter that we'll need to configure is the Avaya Core Server. Let's do that by clicking on the Core Server link on the left. The Core Server is the server that all gateways communicate with and send their alarms to. Again, we'll go ahead and do that by first clicking on the Edit button. Now, for simplicity, I've went ahead and pre-populated my parameters here. Please go ahead and enter these same parameters into your gateway as these are the official Avaya fully qualified domain name servers along with the appropriate ports. Once having done so, go ahead and press apply. Now you can also go ahead and do the test to ensure that you do in fact have connectivity back to Avaya by clicking on the test button. A successful test should return connection successful to both the primary and the secondary server, both of which will have matching entries. Moving on, the next parameter that we'll need to configure is the Avaya remote server. The remote server is the Avaya server that all gateways use to facilitate remote access sessions to your devices. We'll begin by clicking on the remote server link on the left. And just like before, we're going to want to go ahead and click on the edit button. Now again, I've had mine pre-populated, but please go ahead and enter these values just as you see them here, as they are the official fully qualified domain name servers at Avaya, as well as the ports. Once you've entered those parameters, go ahead and press apply. And just like before, we can go ahead and test this link back to Avaya again by clicking on the test button and ensuring that we do have a connection verified to both our primary and our secondary server. Okay, so that takes care of the three required parameters. However, you may have one optional parameter that may be required, and that's a proxy server. If so, we're going to want to go ahead and configure the proxy server by clicking on the proxy link on the left and providing the proxy details. Now the SAL gateway does support two types of proxies, an HTTP proxy or a SOX proxy. The SOX proxy can be authenticated or not. Depending on the proxy type that you have, go ahead and enter those parameters and then press apply. Now again, as you can see, I've went ahead and pre-populated my parameters, so I'll go ahead and press apply. And once again, we have the option to test this connection from our gateway by clicking on the test button. As you can see here, I have a connection successful, so I will go ahead and move on. We're now at the final step where we need to restart our gateway services for these changes to take effect. As you can see here, I'm given the link that I can click to go ahead and do just that. I'll go ahead and click on that link. I'll then click on apply next to configuration changes. I'll be asked to acknowledge this change by clicking OK, so I'll go ahead and do that. And after a few moments, you will see the gateway restart the services. Now this process can take up to two minutes, so please be patient until you see the message. There are no configuration changes to be applied. Once this message appears, your gateway has restarted the services and your gateway will now be online with Avaya. 
Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at avayamentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.